We built a bolt together go kart, and you can too. We're excited to announce that Bill Brick and Pete from Go Power Sports have worked together to build the first fully bolt together go kart kit that we know of. After many months of design and testing three prototype carts through ruts, jumps, and even a few crashes, we haven't had a single bolt loosen. Click the link in our description to go to the Go Power Sports website where you can see the listing and the final price. We also have another link to our Facebook group Bolt Cart Builders where you can ask questions and connect with other builders. This kit comes with everything you need to go from a box of bolts and brackets to a full-fledged cart. We designed it for both inexperienced and experienced riders of all sizes. The pedals are adjustable so you can match your height. And this kit comes with a three horse engine, but was designed to be able to handle a fully built 212. If you bought a kit, congratulations on your brand new go-kart and we'll walk you through how to put it together. If you're just stopping by, here's a few clips to show you what this cart is all about. We're excited to work with Go Power Sports to bring this kit to you, so let's start unboxing the bolt cart. After you unpack your boxes, this is what you're going to see. We have everything laid out in the order that you're going to assemble it, so I'd suggest pausing your video and laying your parts out just like this, so it'll make it a little bit easier when you get to building your bolt cart. So all these pieces right here will make an entire go-kart frame. We use a CNC laser cutter for all the tubes and brackets, so you won't even have to touch a drill and you won't have to worry about things lining up. After that, we're using all standard go-kart parts that are in stock at gopowersports.com. Painting your bolt cart is when you can add a little bit of a personal touch and some pizzazz on that frame. So no matter how you paint it, you definitely need to get you some acetone or some type of degreaser and wipe down all the metal brackets and tubes because they're coated in grease and oil from the manufacturing process. Now you can paint it a couple different ways. You can do it like we're doing and paint everything individually. You can get it powder coated or you can assemble it and paint it all together. But no matter how you do it, just make sure you get everything nice and clean. If the cut is where the seam of the tube is running, these circles that are cut out from the bolt holes may want to hang around. Should be really easy to get them out. All you do is take a bolt, punch it through, and you're good. If you're painting or powder coating your frame, do a dry fit up first to make sure everything fits correctly. Afterwards, if things don't line up, you may have some paint or powder coat in the bolt holes that needs to get cleaned out. We have a couple notes before we start. If we don't mention the size of the bolt, that means it's one of these many M8 by 45 millimeter bolts, which are about 1.75 inches long. When it comes time to torque down your bolts, you're gonna use 18 foot pounds or 25 Newton meters. We recommend using this beam style torque wrench. They're super cheap and really easy to use. If you're not planning on disassembling your cart, we recommend using a thread locker. But one nice thing about this design is that we have double brackets and redundant bolts so you won't have to worry about anything shaking loose. Here's an overview of the tools you'll need. Almost every bolt is a 13 millimeter, so you'll definitely need a 13 millimeter socket for your torque wrench. Besides that, we'll need a 9 16 13, 1 half, 10 millimeter, 13 16 15 16 and one inch and one sixteenth socket. You could probably get away with just using adjustable wrenches for those if you need to. We'll have a ratchet to make things easier, You'll need a pen to mark your holes for the seat. We have a five millimeter and a four millimeter Allen wrench, a Phillips screwdriver, needle nose, a mallet, and some Loctite, which we highly suggest using. The only power tool you'll need is a drill with a 7 seconds drill bit. But if you have access to an impact, this will make building the bolt cart a lot quicker and easier. One specialty tool we suggest is a chain brake. 
You'll need to replace your chain eventually, and this will make your life a lot easier. So you can find these on the Go Power Sports website. Now we'll start with the instructions. First, lay out your two frame rails and your front axle. At the front of your frame rail, there's these two holes that are for your pedals. These holes are not on the center line of the tube, so make sure they're at the top of the tube or else your pedals won't sit correctly. Now we'll lay out our crossbars. Our first crossbar has five holes in the middle with four on the sides and one on the top. Our second crossbar has four holes on the top and the side with the extra hole goes on the left. And our third crossbar has five holes on the top and the side with the extra hole will go on the left as well. We've raised the frame up on two by fours. This will make it a lot easier to get your bolts and brackets on. And we've laid out all our brackets. These four at the front are this right angle bracket. Over here we have our seat surround and our rear corner bracket. And on this end we have our engine mount plate. Now we'll put a bolt in every hole on the top of the frame. The only holes that don't need bolts are these four at the front for the cable mounts and these two in the middle for the floor pans. On the rear corners of the cart, these two bolts that are spaced far apart will use the long 60 millimeter bolts. And same thing goes for this corner. When you're mounting your front axle, make sure that the top of your spindle is pointing towards the rear of the cart and that these two holes are at the bottom. Next, we'll add the brackets underneath the frame. These four at the front are gonna use triangular brackets with five holes. The next two will have triangular brackets with four holes. And the ones at the back will have these corner brackets. For now, since we still have to put the floor pans and other parts on, we're just gonna hand thread the nuts on. Now we'll install their front crash bar. Now we're going to flip over the go-kart. We like to have the cardboard down to make sure we don't scratch our paint. Now we'll put our seat pan in. I suggest using something like a 2x4 to put under your brackets and bolts so that they don't fall through. And then we'll unhand thread all of these nuts because our floorboard will go over these brackets. And now we're ready for our seat pans. After you've removed all the nuts from the front brackets, we will install our front floor pan. Since there's so many bolts going through these floor pans, and if they're painted, you may need to use a mallet to get those on. Another thing that's really important is that you need to follow the same pattern when putting your floor pans in. So we went under, over, under, over. If you don't do that, the seams won't line up correctly. After all the nuts are hand tight, we'll then lift it up a little bit and put in these middle bolts that are for our floor pans. This middle one will be the hardest since it has all four floor pans to go through.
While our frame still flipped over, now is the perfect time to torque down all of our bolts. What I like to do is take an impact and a 13mm wrench. I'll be really careful not to let the head of the bolt spin, and I'll tighten all these down to one or two clicks. After all these are snug, then I'll take a torque wrench, and we'll tighten each of these down to at least 18 foot-pounds. We won't torque down these four rear bolts for the pillow blocks. We'll just leave these hand tight so that everything stays lined up. If you're going to use thread locker, we'll add a little dab to each bolt now. Now we have everything torqued down to 18 foot-pounds or more, and it may rattle a little bit now, but once you have your seat on the back and your feet up front, we didn't notice any rattling when we were driving. Now we'll assemble our axle. First we'll bolt our sprocket to our sprocket hub. We can just have these hand tight for now. To make things easier, we'll assemble our axle as a unit, then bolt our pillow blocks to the frame. We have nine lock collars, two pillow blocks, and our brake and sprocket. We'll start with one lock collar. Then one pillow block. We'll have the set screws facing towards the outside of the cart. And these come pre-greased, but make sure your grease fitting is tight. We'll add two more lock collars. Then our brake with the open side of the brake facing to the right. Two more lock collars. Another pillow block. Another lock collar, our sprocket with the hub of the sprocket facing towards the right, and finally three more lock collars, two for the sprocket and one for the wheel. And here's another look at the layout to make sure you have everything assembled correctly. We'll start by putting the pillow block near the sprocket on first. Make sure your sprocket is on the outside of the frame, and then make sure your brake is on the left of this bracket right here. And we'll set down our other pillow block. We'll slide our pillow blocks towards the back of the frame. Then we can snug these bolts up just a little bit so it doesn't slide around. Now we can finally flip our frame. You may need to grab a friend to help you. Uh, what we did to make it a little easier is tighten up the lock collars that held the axle in so it doesn't slide. Now we'll add our spindles. These spindles have one nylon wheel spacer and two nylon split bushings. So make sure all three of those are on when you install them. We'll have our tie rods up front, so mount them that way. And I usually like to put a little grease on this bolt just to keep things moving smoothly. Now comes the exciting moment when we turn this frame into a roller. You'll put your front tires on. Make sure your valve stem is facing outward so you can get to it easily. We'll now add our steering mount. The tubes we'll use have four holes and this kind of angle cut at the bottom. The brackets we'll use are the lower steering brackets. They'll be in this kind of taller direction, so not like this. They'll be where they're standing more upright. The steering shaft is next. We'll start with one lock collar, then the short lower steering bracket, then the tall lower steering bracket, and then one more lock collar. And these come in the kit with your steering assembly. Getting a friend to help you with this may make things easier, but you can definitely do it yourself. So we'll have the short one in the front, and the longer one in the back, put those in. We pulled our bolts out a little bit so this can slide on. 
You can use a four millimeter Allen wrench to tighten this a little bit so it doesn't fall and hit your frame. Now we can torque down all of these bolts. Before we tighten down our upper steering mounts, we're gonna add our kill switch. So we'll strip back this shorter wire quite a bit so we can wrap around one of the bolts. Now we can wrap the stripped end around this bolt so that we have really good contact. Wrap it so that when you tighten the bolt, the wire will get tightened as well. Next, we can pop on our kill switch. Then add our on off plate. and the nut. These can be a little tricky, so make sure not to cross thread it. The way our kill switch is set up, on is off and off is on, but you can cut the tab on this label and spin it around to correct it. When you're tightening down this bolt, make sure that you don't get the rubber part of the wire under the bolt so that you have a good connection. So this part's a little difficult. You need to make sure that your steering's not binding at all. So right here, I feel just a little bit. So what I found the best method is, is to take a wrench or a hammer and just... There we go. Look at that. Okay. And let's see. Yep, very easy to spin. So you may have to do that more than one time just to make sure everything spins freely. But trust me, it's worth it when you don't have your steering binding up on you. You'll probably need these brackets to be all the way slid up so that you have room for your tie rods. On our go-kart, we're using these style tie rod ends, but yours will most likely come with these with brass bushings. Tie rods are next. We'll start with both ends threaded all the way in so it's the shortest. Keep in mind that one end will be reverse thread, so it may take you a couple tries to get it right. Just be careful not to cross thread them. We'll put our bolt, then our split washer, spindle. These Isuzu spindles can sometimes be a little tight, so you might need to thread it in a little bit. And all three of the steering bolts will use these nylon lock nuts. And for the middle, we'll have our tie rod end, split washer, our other tie rod end, our other split washer, and then our nylon lock nut. And these three bolts will also get torqued to 18 foot-pounds. For our cart, we didn't use any extra split washers, but we did have to push the steering shaft pretty much all the way up and then tighten the lock collar. We'll use a 15 16 inch ratchet to tighten our spindle bolt. We're gonna tighten it as much as we can without having any resistance in the steering. That'll keep our steering from feeling loose. To tighten your front wheel, we use a 15 16 socket. We don't wanna crush the bearing, but we wanna make sure we're in the nylon. So I kinda of just go until we start seeing a little bit of resistance on the wheel. Now we'll align our front wheels. We'll start with our tie rods threaded all the way in so the wheels will be towed in. And then we'll make sure our steering shaft is pushed all the way up and our four millimeter set screw is tightened all the way. Next, we'll start by aligning one of the wheels with the back and making sure that one is straight. Then we'll unthread this tie rod until our pitman arm is vertical, right in the middle of its range of motion. After that, we can lock down our nuts on this tie rod. I'll get them hand tight for now and move over to the other side. On this side, we'll make sure our pitman arm stays vertical and we'll unthread this tie rod until this wheel lines up with the rear wheel and is facing straight. We can then lock these nuts down on the tie rods. We'll give everything a once over and once we like how the go-kart looks, we can tighten down these jam nuts with an adjustable wrench. Now we'll install what I call the armrest brackets. We're going to have our bolts coming in from the inside so that your hip or the seat pad won't be hitting the bolts. On the right side, we'll add our build brick or peat seat bracket. And our Go Power Sports bracket goes on the left side. Then we'll add our armrest bars. If you want to add some comfort, we'll have a link in the description for some square tube padding. 
These bolts will definitely need to be facing outside so you don't hit your legs. The seat back tubes are cut at an angle so they'll go like this. And we can face these two bolts inside so they look nice. We'll put our seat top brackets where they read correctly. So that means GPS on the left and BBR on the right. It's now time for the final tube. Here we go. And I like to put these where they're readable as well. So BBR on the right and GPS on the left. And we'll also torque these down to at least 18 foot pounds. For your seat back, we'll use these smaller 40 millimeter bolts. These will be in your other hardware bag. Since we just had our pillow blocks snug before, we'll torque these down. First, we'll slide our axle all the way back. I'm just going to kind of hold it with my legs while I tighten it. When putting your wheel on, we'll use two pieces of keyway. Then we'll put our axle washer and nut back on. We'll thread this one down until we hit the nylon, and then you can use either a one and one sixteenth socket or an adjustable wrench to tighten these down. And you'll tighten it so that one or two threads stick past the nylon section of the nut. We'll push our wheel all the way to the end of the axle and then take our lock collar, push it all the way up. Make sure that these two slots for the keyways do not line up so that your keyway won't slide out while you're driving. We'll then take a five millimeter Allen wrench and tighten these down. We'll do the same for the other side. And if your Allen wrench doesn't fit, you may have to snug up your lock collar, then remove the wheel to tighten it. Now that our wheels are tightened down, we can start centering our axle. We'll basically just measure from each side and keep checking until we have it right. Ours is about four and three quarters inches, but yours may be different. Then we'll tighten the lock collars on the inside of these pillow blocks to lock our axle in place. For the pillow blocks, we'll add a little drop of Loctite to these set screws and use a 1 8 Allen wrench to set these in. Now is a great time to install the final piece of your steering assembly. This is your 12 inch steering wheel. It comes with a hardware kit and to install it, you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench and a five millimeter Allen key. On the back, you'll place your spine hub and then your bolts. We'll get the nylon lock nuts hand tight. Rotate your steering shaft to put your pitman arm directly in the center and then try and line up your wheel so that it matches. Once you lock down your three bolts, you can then tighten the center bolt with an adjustable wrench, making sure to line up the cotter pin hole with the ridges in the castle nut and slide your cotter pin through and then bend it. <coughs> Done. These kits will come with a 98cc three horsepower engine. These engines do ship dry, so you will have to open up the fill plug and fill it up with some 10W30 oil. Your engine comes with a clutch and clutch cover along with the hardware you need. So the first thing you'll install are the two bolts that hold on the clutch cover because you won't be able to get them in when the clutch is in place. They are a little hard to thread in at first, but they get easier as you go along. Next, you'll install the spacer onto the output shaft. Then you can install your clutch by lining up the keyway. Once you get that fully seated, you can take your clutch bolt, thread that in, and then you can take a 10 millimeter wrench and pull the pull start cord to keep it in place while you tighten it. Or what we like to do is just take an impact and zap it on. With your clutch fully mounted, you can then slide on your clutch guard onto the bolts and tighten them down. All right, now it's time to pop on the engine and bring this cart to life. You'll have four bolts included in your motor mount hardware kit. 
We'll put the split washer on top and the flange nut on the bottom and we'll leave these loose so we can slide our engine around. Your kit will come with three feet of 35 chain. You'll have to break the chain to size so the easiest way would be to get a chain break with your kit. There's also other ways such as using an angle grinder or a Dremel. Before we break our chain, we'll remove our master link. We've positioned our engine near the back of the motor mount. Then we'll drape our chain over and where these two ends meet is where you'll break the chain. Make sure that these ends are inner links because your master link will act as the outer link. We've marked what pin we need to remove to have this inner link be the end of our chain. We'll put it in our chain break and tighten the big nut. And then this smaller handle will remove the pin for us. Now that we've removed our pin, our chain is broken. We took out 10 links here, but make sure you measure for yourself. We'll put our master link in where the clip side is away from the clutch. And when we install the clip, the tail trails. So this open part will go away from the direction of the rotation of the chain. We'll double check that our sprocket's lined up, then we can tighten down our inside lock collar. Then we'll add our keyway to our sprocket hub. Our keyway sticks out a little bit, so we'll line up our lock collar so that it can be flush against the hub. Then our second lock collar will have flipped so the keyway can't slide out. We have four 916 bolts to bolt the sprocket to the hub. After checking one last time that our chain's lined up, we can tighten down these four half inch bolts for the engine. We'll use one of our normal 45 millimeter bolts for the brakes, and then we'll use a nylon lock nut. One quick note, if you're planning on using a 212 engine, you may have to space it up so that you don't hit your brake cable. When you're tightening your brake down, make sure you have a little pressure so everything stays tight, but try not to bend this band. Now we'll make our lock collar for the brake just a little bit snug. After that, we can slide our brake over so that it perfectly lines up with our band. Then when we remove our brake, we can tighten down the lock collar. Next, we can add our keyway and then our final lock collar. And again, make sure it doesn't line up where the keyway can slide out. Next, we'll add our brake cable. You'll kind of have to bend the housing up to get it to fit in. Then we have a 40 millimeter bolt and a nylon lock nut that will hold our brake cable to our brake band. Then we can snake our cable through this gap in the frame. Your cable should kind of curl around like this. For the pedals, we have two mounting holes so you can decide between a close or a far position. This gives you about two inches of adjustment. Then you can decide whether or not you'll run the seat back. If you're running the seat back and your pedal's in the close position, you have around 33 inches between the back of your seat and your pedal. If you're not running your seat back and your pedal's in the far position, then you have about 39 inches between your seat back and your pedal. If you still need more adjustment, you can also add a two x four to the back of the seat and just put a longer screw in there. We'll start with the far position. Your pedal will be mounted in the hole that is closest to the front of the go-kart. Your pedal stop will be positioned like this and mounted to these two front bolts. Your pedal stop bracket will look a little different. It won't have this angle right here. It'll be symmetrical. Then we'll have our cable bracket facing this way. If you want your pedal to be in the close position, we'll move our pedal back a hole and then flip our pedal stop to be on the two rear bolts. Then we'll take our cable bracket and flip it around so our spring's in the right position. We'll start by removing the two bolts for the mounting position you choose. Then we'll put our pedal stop back on. You'll have eight regular M8 washers in your hardware kit. We'll add four to each pedal and then add the lock nut to the other side. Make sure the threads are fully engaged in the lock nut. You may have to remove a washer if they're not. We use a 13 mil to tighten this nut and make sure a pedal moves freely. You may have to rotate this bolt if the pedal rest hits it. And we'll torque down both of these cable brackets.
Then we'll add our return springs to the second hole from the top. We'll loosen the front nut on our brake cable and add that to the bracket. Then we'll take our six mil bolt and two of the lock nuts. We'll point this facing in towards the go-kart and add a lock nut. These are 10 millimeters. Then we can put this in the top hole of our pedal and add the other lock nut. There you go. Adjusting our brake, we'll just start out with this front mount kind of in the middle. Then we'll go to the back and adjust our brake so that when we hit our pedal, it feels firm, but we have a little bit of dead zone, so we're not riding on our brake. Then we'll do the same for the throttle. Sliding the cable through. Then we'll thread our throttle cable and housing through these clamps. We'll use a Phillips and a 10 mil wrench. Then we'll tighten your cable housing to the bracket. And if you want your throttle to be less touchy, you can move this bolt downwards a little bit. We also suggest leaving a little bit of a dead zone so you're not constantly hitting your throttle when you're bouncing around. Now we can ride our kill switch wire. I like to bring our wire down here and put it between this bracket and the floorboard. Then we'll follow our brake cable. I like to wrap it two or three times just to keep everything together. Then we'll cut our wire to size. Make sure you give yourself a lot of excess. Then we'll strip back a fairly large section of our wire. You can use a wire strippers, you can use a knife, just make sure you don't cut your wire. Then take your kill switch wire from your engine, put your exposed copper in there, and we'll wrap that around to make sure it can't come out. So this is pretty strong. If you have connectors, feel free to use them. We will then put the sheath over and grab some electrical tape to be extra safe. Up next is our seats. So if you're using the backrest, you put the backrest in first and then the seat bottom. We'll take a marker and we'll mark each of these holes so we can drill them. We'll be using a 7 30 seconds drill bit to drill these out. Make sure you don't go all the way through and damage your vinyl. Then we'll use the provided hardware to bolt in our seat. These will be a one half inch wrench. To make things look a little nicer, we're gonna add these one inch pipe caps. We designed it so that you have enough space on these vertical tubes. If you wanna add them to any of these horizontal tubes, you can just cut out the center section and pre-bend them and they'll be easy enough to get in. And we'll put an Amazon link to these in the description. We know at this point y'all are itching to drive it, but before you go ride, you need to lift your rear tires off the ground, add a little bit of gas to the tank, and we'll start the engine and test our throttle, brakes, and kill switch. Now we'll fill it up with gas, take it outside, and take it on its first drive.
just got back from our first drive and this thing is a blast. It's really pleasant to drive, there's no rattles, the brakes are good, it handles well, and the three horse motor got us up to 26 miles an hour. So this is a really good starter for a younger or a less experienced rider. If you want to upgrade, it does fit a Tillotson 212, and for our prototype cart, we got to 40 miles an hour with no internal mods. And with those slick tires on concrete, it handled a little bit more like a race cart than a yard cart. If you purchased a bolt cart, I really want to say thank you. I spent a lot of time designing this kit, and me and Joe spent many hours building, testing, and filming this bolt cart. Keep an eye on our social media to see the upgrades for this cart and other bolt together kits we have coming soon. We really want to give a big thank you to Go Power Sports. With them, we were able to make the Bolt Together Go-Kart a reality. Mm -hmm.